Hello and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall channel. This prophetic word comes from Rosangela Ate, Vancouver, Canada. I am transplanting you so you can thrive. I asked the Lord for a word for this month and the season ahead. He gave me a dream. In this dream, I saw the mighty hand of the Lord picking up my husband and me from our native country in Italy and placing us in the country of Canada. He said, you were handpicked by me and transplanted there. I have a specific purpose for you to accomplish so that you and those around you might thrive. To transplant means to lift and reset or to plant into another soil or situation. It means to remove from one place or context and settle or introduce elsewhere, to relocate. It also means to transfer like an organ or tissue from one part or individual to another. Just as a viable organ from a body that is dying has the power to revive another body that's about to die, so do you have the power to bring life to a barren place and to flourish in it. This new place which I am transplanting you, it will be revived. It will help you thrive because you will be in the ideal environment in the right season. This place could be a different relationship or a circle, a church, a job, a ministry, maybe even a region or a country. It doesn't even have to be a physical place. It can be any place or environment which you feel out of place at first. Getting uprooted and plucked from everything familiar is extremely uncomfortable. Leaving a place that you've been in forever, a place in which you once thrived and were comfortable in, is painful. Just as Joseph was plucked out, uprooted, and transplanted into the place that he, it was completely foreign to him. He was taken from his home, from everything and everyone he loved, from everything that was familiar to him, and into an unfamiliar place, a place with different beliefs, different customs, a place completely foreign to young Joseph. But in order to fulfill his destiny, his calling, he needed to be transplanted into the foreign land. He needed to be educated about their customs. He needed to learn their ways so that he could gain influence in that kingdom when the time was right. This meant that he was going to feel lonely and abandoned and forgotten, isolated and neglected. He must have wondered where God was many times and kept believing in God's promises, the dreams he received as a young man. The purpose of our trials, for the most part, or most of the time rather, it only becomes clear once we've gone through them. This is what happened to Joseph in Genesis 45. Joseph was forced to adjust. He developed his character. and God will help us. It will help us to reveal to us our gifts and our talents and where they are in in a new and unfamiliar place. That's where it's forcing us to be stretched, to step out of our comfort zone. We will begin to thrive as we find our bearings. Just like Joseph was forced to adjust, he found favor with Pharaoh and he followed the leading of the Lord. Psalm 105, 16 through 21. If Joseph resisted the transition instead of letting God work everything out, and if he kept dwelling on the past instead of letting go of offenses, he would have probably been killed or imprisoned until the day he died. I believe the transition period between being plucked from the familiar place and being transplanted into the new place is extremely critical. That's where you develop character and strength. It's that place of vulnerability that the enemy comes with his schemes to try and thwart God's plan for our destiny. Just like the environmental conditions required to keep an organ viable for transplant. As as it's being transported from one place to another, it needs to be absolutely perfect. Conditions in and around us must also be extremely critical for us to be able to thrive in our new environment. We need to let go of anything, anyone that would contaminate our soul. We need to keep our emotions in check. We need to keep the word of God as the lamp unto our feet. We need to keep an environment sterile from all negative influences. If we resist our new assignment, there's a risk that the body would reject us, just like a body might reject a new organ that's transplanted. When I say the body, I don't mean the church body because there's always going to be someone who rejects us. What I mean is the body is the calling, the assignment, what's on our lives. If we resist it, we might create a hostile environment for ourselves and make things harder to accomplish. Each trial allows us to change and shed a layer of being that is has no place in us. Just like a caterpillar sheds its skin, it grows into a thicker one each time. So do we become stronger and more mature in our character as we grow as we mature in the Lord. 
Once the caterpillar is ready to go through that last, most critical stage of metamorphosis, it encloses itself in a chrysalis. In that dark, lonely, and constricted space, that's where the real transformation happens. A caterpillar's body completely breaks down. It becomes liquid. The only thing left are these cells. They're called the imago cells, which means it's, it means image in Latin. These cells contain the blueprint, what the butterfly will look like, its color, size, shape, pattern of wings, and so forth. So what really blew my mind was this. The imago cells are already present in the caterpillar before it even hatches. These cells are already primed to turn the caterpillar into a butterfly, but they're prevented from growing and developing by a constant surge of a juvenile hormone. As the larva feeds and grows and develops, these imago cells, they're temporarily suppressed. They remain dormant. The caterpillar believes and behaves that like a free-living, eating, growing, but developmentally repressed embryo. <laughs> when it reaches maturity, the imago cells start to develop unhindered until the new creation is ready to hatch from its prison. If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. Do you see the metaphor, the similarities between us and a caterpillar? We're all born with the potential to be transformed into the image of our Savior. Our image is, is spiritual, spiritual maturity at first with sins, character traits, circumstances. It hinders the Holy Spirit's work in our life. The Lord allows us to go through experiences and trials so that we can let go of those things that are suppressing our true identity from emerging. He allows whatever is necessary to develop our character and to spiritually mature us into a new creation, dead to sin, alive in Christ. In that dark and lonely, constricted and painful place, we completely transform into who we are meant to be in Him. And only then are we able to be set free and accomplish our destiny. Only then are we ready to pollinate, multiply, and make the world beautiful by manifesting and spreading his love and glory to the world. The Lord tested Joseph's character until he was ready for the fulfillment of dreams. He had to learn how to deal with betrayal and anger, resentment, injustice, pride, feelings of abandonment. He had to stay hopeful in the midst of despair, humble in the midst of false accusations. No school can prepare you for those experiences or emotions. The only way to learn is to experience these things and develop character. This is what every Christian who wants to be fully used by the Lord will go through. These are the things that Jesus went through as well. He was betrayed. He was accused, abused, abandoned, mistreated. And he bore it all with humility and love. In that place of complete abandon, as we relinquish our will and dreams to him, that's where we will truly find who we are. When we are finally ready to be revealed to the world, when our chronos time intersects the Lord's kairos time, that's where we will be the most fruitful and when the glory of the Lord will be manifested through us. So if you find yourself in a place of transition or if it's transplantation, don't fight it. Don't let your heart be hardened by the things around you that, you, that, you, that may seem to not make any sense. Remember, you are there for the purpose of greater than you imagine. And God has everything under control. Trust him. Lean into him. Not only will you begin to feel peace, but you will thrive. Let's pray into this word together. Heavenly Father, I just kept getting this, this phrase about painful or uncomfortable. Lord, as I was, I was reading through this word, I just... Anyone who's going through a transplanting right now, Lord, I just want to pray peace over, over them. Friend, if you're going through a transplanting season, I just want to say peace be to you. Peace in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, bring peace into my friend's situation. That we would not be focused on the immaturity, the sins, the, the, the misplaced expectations, or the hope deferred. But Lord, that we would trust you. Trust in you. You're the, you're the, you're the vine dresser. You're the master gardener. You're all those things who transplants us. And Father, we, we thank you for transplanting us first and foremost from the, the enemy's camp, from the, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We are so grateful that you have called us. And Father, we pray, like Joseph, may we go through the journey that you've set for us, Father, continuing to cling to the promises, continuing to cling to you, Father, that we may be more and more uh, uh, pruned into your image, into your character, and becoming more like you, Father, because truly then will we thrive. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.